Good day, YouTube. It is the 23rd of November, 2023. This is going to be a short little video on switches and relays. I've done a lot of uh, electric uh, control videos. Um, never really went into detail on switches and relays and such. Um, and I've left some people scratching their heads and asking questions. And I was set up to and did another video today. So I was in a good uh, position to do that today, to explain this a little bit in detail. And hope to help some people out. Let's just uh, go with the basics for now, switches and relays. And then um, if you have uh, some need for some more elaborate control ideas, um, do it in the comments and I can help you along. My background is in the electrical field. Um, in electrical construction field and I have uh, 45 years in the industry so we've done a lot including PLC controls and such but this could be very very basic so let's start off with uh, I'll, I'll explain what I've got going on here so right here I have a 12 volt battery up here on this yellow box I have amber and white LED uh, clearance lights like something you'd put on a trailer um, hooked up with all these leads, I have a fairly common, very common actually, relay. You'll see these in cars, you'll see these in lawn and garden tractors, you'll see these in kits that you buy for driving lights and so forth. Um, this is going to be rated at, you know, 30 or 40 amps, and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, that's what's connected here, and then... We've got a switch up over here. It might be hiding from you um, right now. And that switch is just another one of these. These are all very recent Amazon purchases for me, by the way. So this switch will have a voltage rating and a current rating. Now, if you're using this on 12 or 24 volts or something, you want to be sure that this switch is rated for that or more. Okay, so what it's rated for is a minimum no is a maximum <laughs> not a minimum okay this one's actually has a 15 amp rating at 250 volts ac and if you well, and if it had a rating at 120 volts it would probably be twice the current okay um probably be rated at 25 30 amps but it has 250 volt rating 15 amps Okay, what if you wanted to control something that drew more current than this switch was capable of? Or if you wanted to have something that would just really last and last and last and uh, wanted to be more robust, even if the current was within the rating of the switch? That is where relays come in. So let's stop for a second, talk about switches. This is a single pole, single throw switch. So one pole means that there's one lead coming in, one lead coming out. You bring a hot wire in, you take a switch leg going out. You do not always have to switch the hot. For example, in a vintage vehicle, there's a wire coming up the steering column to the horn button. And typically that wire is grounded. So you're switching a ground. Nothing wrong with switching the ground, and relays make that really easy. I switched the ground when I wired up the dual electric fans in my shop truck, for example. Okay, I have a temperature switch tied into the cooling system, which turns on a relay, and what I'm doing is switching the ground. It's safer to run ground wires all over than it is to run hot wires all over. And so that's what I elected to do. You could work either way, um, but there are reasons, both pro and con, for doing either a positive or a negative. Just think your project through. Single pole, single throw, okay? This has a toggle on it, and it only goes once. There is no other positions. It's either on or it's off. There's no other choice in the matter. It's on or it's off. On will always be one direction. 
off will always be the other direction. It'll switch one thing, one way, and that's it. Single pull, single throw. Okay. As an example, just grab something off the shelf. This is a switch, and you notice that it has two on positions and an off position. And you look on the back, and it's got six leads. Okay. This is a double pull. For example, if you had a 240 volt load and you wanted to switch both hot legs, you could put one leg on one side, one leg on another side. Okay. You would want to double check the rating of this switch and make sure that it was rated for 250 volts. This one is, I can tell you that. It isn't what I intended it for, but it could do that. Two pull, double throw with a twist. This will go one position, off position, second position. So this is capable of doing two different things, not simultaneously. It turns one off to turn the other one on, okay? But there are a lot of applications where a two-pull double throw is the correct switch. Now this is a two-pull double throw center off. One more uh, description of this switch. They're not necessarily all center off. If you're looking on Amazon or wherever you're buying your switches, um, if you need the center off, you need to be sure that's what you're ordering. Um, this I bought for a particular application and I needed a double pull, double throw, center off. Okay. So it can do one or the other or off. That's the way that works. Okay, that's switches. That's the low down, easy on the switches. So what I have set up here, I'm going to hook up the hot wire. This is red wire here to my battery here. I'm going to reach over to my switch hiding over here. My one pole, one throw switch and turn it on. I can do it one-handed and I have now turned on all of those lights with the switch now then where does a relay come in right now we're not using the relay but we're about to let's say the load you want to turn on are your your fans on your radiator or you have big off-road lights and you don't want to bring that power wire into your vehicle under your dash in a large wire with all that stuff you could leave all the big power handling wire out under the hood and only bring uh maybe you could draw a hot wire from your fuse box that's already in your car and then only take a switch leg out of your car to a relay would not make it easy you could even power your relay and power the coil in the relay, which I'll explain in a second, and take a ground, switched ground, out of your car to your relay. So you could switch the ground wire, which is happens to be the green wire I've got right here. You could switch the ground rather than the hot and not have any hot wire in your car at all. So think about that when you're setting out to design your wiring it's just another option but back to why you would use a relay again safety you could leave your power under the hood uh, number two it's more robust it has bigger contacts in it than a switch does and typically it'll handle more power than the switch and it will do it for years and years where this, if you run this thing at its rating, quite honestly, it's not going to last that long. And some of these switches are way cheaper than this thing, and I wouldn't trust them for nothing. So, let's picture this as being uh, not lights, but they're a big fan. All right, let's not run those fan on a little switch. Let's run them on a relay. So, what's the hookup? So, on the relay... It has a little wiring diagram. Let me get you a little closer, okay? 
And see on the left, that's a kind of a picture of a coil. So this is like a remote switch, and this has like a coil in it that acts like an electromagnet. So when that coil inside of this relay is energized, it goes click. It's a, like an electromagnet that pulls the contacts together. Okay, and they're numbered 85 and 86. I've got it written down on this little notepad here, 85 and 86. Okay, if you put 12 volts across that coil, it will go click. The electromagnet will bring the contacts together and make this relay switch on, okay? It'll make this switch on. So you would use something like a spade connector to connect to wires 85 and 86. And you'll see those on this relay on that back side on the left and the right side of the relay. That's 85, 86, that's the coil, okay? That is what you want to connect your switch to. So you're no longer going to use the switch to switch on your lights or switch on your fan. You're going to use that switch to turn on your relay. Okay? And you can do either positive or negative. Your choice. Let's connect it, shall we? Let me get this right the first time, okay? So we're going to disconnect the hot wire from... The switch, okay. I've got to look, see what I got. So just so you can follow along, I'll do this uh, kind of carefully. So this will be a hot wire, and I need to tap it somehow. So let me remove this for a second. Let me remove this for a second. Lights have gone off, haven't they? And I'm going to connect. Hang on. Hang on. Sorry about that. I set this up this morning. I'm just getting to it. It's already dark out. All right. Let me back up just a second. Follow my wires here for a sec. So right now the red wire is connected to the battery. That's my positive. Right now it's on the switch. And I put the jumper wire already up here to the relay. You can follow that red wire down this blue wire and it's now connected to this terminal on the relay or to number 30 okay so let's talk about these contacts number 30 is the hot wire that you want to use to power the load so if we were running lights or a fan or whatever it's going to run on this power this is where it's going to draw all of its current from. Now, there are two contacts in this relay, okay? There is 87 and 86. I do not have my flashlight with me, but anyway, we these are numbered. I don't know if you can see them in the camera or not. So these are numbered. One of them is 87 and one of them is 86. Actually, it's... Excuse me. 87 and 87A, my apologies, 87 and 87A, I think this is 87A in the center. The 87A is what we call normally closed, which means in an unpowered condition, the relay has not clicked, it is closed, it is a closed relay. So if we hooked our power up here and we plugged our lights into 87A, the lights will burn without the relay activated. So we don't want that, right? We want to be able to turn the switch on and have the switch power the relay and have the relay switch on when the switch is on. So we want to use number 87. That is a what we call normally open. Normally open means in an unpowered state, the contacts are open, but when you power it, they change state and they close, okay? You turn on the switch, which will turn on the relay, which will turn on the normally open set of contacts. So, see if I can do this without confusing myself. I tried to make this as simple as I can. But, what we want to do is use 87 normally open, which I have this white wire plugged 
into, okay? Right now, our lights are being powered, excuse me, by the switch. We're going to disconnect the switch. Lights will go out. We are going to hook the lights up to the relay here. Why aren't they working? We don't have the power going to the coil yet, right? The coil's grounded. Okay, green wire to the battery here. We don't have this hot wire run to 85 yet. We haven't energized the coil. These are normally open contacts. So we have connected to 87, okay? We have power connected to 30, okay? That's that blue wire and the red is up here to the battery through two uh, alligator clip leads. So now what we need to do is take from the switch here, 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 and connect it to, let's do this quick, let me shut that switch off, and connect it to 80, uh, 85. See, nothing's happening. Now when we turn on the switch, the switch is taking its power from the battery. The switch leg is coming through the white wire, changing to the red wire, going to 85. So when I turn the switch on, the switch is going to energize the coil. Okay, 86 is grounded with green. 85 is coming hot right now with the switch. And now we have energized the relay. So the power, again, is on 30. This is the blue wire to the red wire, which makes its way up to the battery. Okay, if I disconnect this, obviously, we lose it. And you can see, hear the relay functioning. Okay. The switch leg is here from the toggle switch. Okay, it can power the lights by itself. We can power this remotely via a relay. One of the other features of a relay, if you wanted to put the switch very far away, like a hundred feet, you could do that without running the power, running big wire with voltage drop and all of those issues. You could run a smaller wire a very long distance with no losses because your relay can be mounted close to the load. The other thing you can do with a relay is have multiple switches on it. Now each switch will turn on and off. You, these won't work like a three-way switch as is. You could put three-way switches in, but a switch like this could turn on and off, like uh, say you were putting lights in your enclosed trailer. You could put a switch at one door and a switch at the other door and run your lights on a relay, okay? Say uh, you have a switch already in your trailer, you could follow the wires to a point where you could put a relay in, then you could put a switch at the back door, for example, and just power up the relay again. You could get a remote control module, or you could do it with a wireless remote. The sky's the limit, once you figure out relays, and they're very inexpensive. Um, I bought this box of 10 on Amazon. I think I probably got them around three bucks a piece if you buy 10 at a time. Um, same with switches. I tend to go to Amazon and buy a bunch of them because I use them a lot. These are nice because they had a mounting tab. They don't always, but I bought some with a mounting tab so I can screw it to something. So I hope that was explanation enough. I know I got turned around a couple times myself um, and that I set this up this morning and eight hours later and trying to film it, but I think we got through it okay. So remember, a toggle switch can control a relay. A relay is nothing more than a coil and a normally open and a normally closed set of contacts. It's fairly simple. Once you've done one, set it up on a bench like this and play with it, and then you're golden, okay? It doesn't matter if you put the 
hot on 85 or 86 and the ground on 86 or 85. It doesn't matter. It's getting 12 volts across the coil. It doesn't know or care. You can run the power from your fuse box, from your battery, from wherever, and it lands on 30. Or you can switch the ground. It doesn't matter. 87A is a normally closed contact, which means when you energize the coil, that will open. There may be control reasons that you would want to do something like that. For example, um, in your brakes on a vintage car, you could run the brakes through here and the turn signal could activate the coil and when you turn the turn signal on it would open up the wire that would normally go to the brakes and let it pass through your turn signal flasher and then when you turn your turn signals back off it would come back and then would allow in the future when you hit the brakes to pass that brake light signal through um, some different vehicles use similar logic as my electric car does so anyway i hope that was helpful um it's difficult to demonstrate, but I did the best I could. Um, I hope it's very helpful. So thanks for watching. Appreciate a thumbs up. And uh, subscribe if you haven't already. We've got a lot of cool projects coming up. You can see all these parts and pieces sitting up here. They're stacking up. we got lots of projects to do. we got a lot of parts ordered. A lot of it's coming in. And uh, we're going to get on to some fun, fun things. Appreciate you watching the video. We'll see you on the next one.